Yeah, so this is the uh, this is one of our new products actually. We just launched it last month internationally, uh -huh. uh, a couple months ago in India. It's called Kiran. You can see it there. Kiran means uh, ray of light in Hindi. And it's a really exciting product for us, uh, and I think for the world really, because it's taken solar to a whole new price level. Uh, so we've really tried to make it much more affordable to the 1.6 billion people who are still off grid. Uh, and it has some pretty you know, neat and uh, very cool features, I think, that came out of our design background. Uh, it's got an integrated solar panel, which means that families don't need to be experts in how to install solar or where to angle it or know how to do math or a lot of these uh, type of things which could be barriers. And so you can just plop it down on the ground and there it's at the sun and if you need to move it, you move it. Uh, it's got a very flexible and easy to use handle so they can hang it from their ceiling. They can put it on the wall on a nail. Uh, you can put it down to study, shines light all around. Uh, they could light up a room like this. So there's many different uses for the product. Uh, nice and easy, low setting, eight hours, higher setting, four hours per day of charge. Uh, and that usually gets families most of what they need. Um, and then it's very, very rugged and durable. So uh, it is actually surprising how much abuse this product can take in a village or in any other scenario. For example, if you hopped it out of our window right now in the fourth story, it would probably be just fine. Uh, so we're really excited about this product, trying to get it out now to as many distributors and customers as possible. How many of those have you sold so far? Uh, so we just started last month internationally. I think we sold somewhere between 10 and 20,000 last month. Okay. Emerging markets. Emerging markets, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's not quite available in the U.S. now, maybe on Amazon. Okay, okay. What about this other product here? Uh, we've got another product here, which we call the Nova, uh, which has a little bit of different feel to it because it has a panel which is what we call off-board. Okay. So this panel, you could put it up on your roof and it's got the wire that could run down into your house. So this is the heavy-duty version of it, This is right? a little bit heavier duty. Uh, yeah, we uh, built this to last. Okay. It feels tough and it is tough. Um, you can still, you could still, you know, hang it from your ceiling. You could still put it on a nail on your wall. You can still uh, use it to study by, and families do. Uh, but you also take it out to your fields when farmers are irrigating or they're planting. Um, and it has, again, same type of approach with a low light and medium light, higher lights so in different settings. It even has a bed light because uh, many families at night they turn their kerosene lanterns really low and they leave it on all night. Uh -huh. uh, so they can do the same thing with this type of product. Okay. Uh, and we have a few variants of this product. Uh, for example, ooh, this one's seen better days, but uh, we've got one that charges mobile phones. Okay. Uh, because many of our customers have mobile phones that they want to charge, but they don't have power. Uh -huh. Oh, so it's got the different another, colors too then. Right, it's got another uh, little plug there. Okay. And a cord to plug it into their mobile phone. Great. All set to go. Yeah, because um, if you're in a village, then you may not exactly have that accessible, right? Well, it's not only that, it's that they then have to spend half a day going out to some town, which may or may not have electricity, and they actually have to spend quite a lot of their daily earnings okay. to pay to the person who's going to charge their mobile phone. Sure, sure. Um, so, and then there's lots and lots of benefits. I mean, uh, some of them are intangible benefits, which I wouldn't even really think about that much. So, for example, uh, a woman who's cooking under one of these lights can see rocks or insects or things that get into the food and um, she has a she feels much better delivering her husband a plate of food which is clean and free of those things and the husband feels much better eating it that's a little more intangible hard to notice uh, on the other hand we've got customers who've used this light to light up entire villages and they've literally doubled their incomes yeah that's an uh, interesting story about how this entire village yeah they, they got electrified with these solar Electrified their village. Uh, they paid full price. Uh, uh -huh. They were making twelve dollars a month beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the village smashes rocks, crushes rocks for highway work during the day. They don't make too much. Uh, and then at night, they started making these banana leaf plates with the lights. They were able to double their income. Their kids went to school. Uh, they were really, really excited about this new technology. And they also saved about two days a month going to buy kerosene. Uh, and spending the money on the transport to buy the kerosene and then on the actual kerosene. Uh, so, yeah, we're feeling really good about A, the adoption by the customers and B, some of the yeah. social impact we're having. Um, tell the story about the snake story, uh, about how you got into this. Uh, yeah, one of the, so, you know, one of the reasons that I was so compelled to start D-Light was that I was living in Benin, which is a country in West Africa. I was in North Benin. 
Uh, and I lived in a village, and I lived in a, in a mud house, but I didn't have electricity, so I used a kerosene lantern all the time. Uh, and I had a couple of different experiences in that village. Uh, one of them was going into my house one night, and a snake bit me just inside the door to my house. Uh -huh. And I, you know, I was imagining this kerosene lantern, and I dropped the lantern, and the glass smashed. And then it was pitch black, and I was alone in a room with a snake. Uh, a friend <laughs> rushed over, uh, found the snake, they killed it, and then we spent the remainder of the night, many, many hours, trying to go to different villages, trying to find a clinic that had an antidote. But since there's no electricity, we had to find a clinic, A, that carried it, and B, that had a kerosene-powered fridge, and we finally found one. Uh, and I got that. And I also had other experiences in my village. Uh, I had a next-door neighbor, a young kid, who knocked over kerosene and it lit on fire, and, and he got third-degree burns all from head to toe all over his body. Uh, he managed to live, but I just had a lot of these things very close to home, mm -hmm. uh, which were, they didn't make sense to me because I knew the technology was there and the market mm -hmm. was there, and so right. it was sort of, this made a lot of sense to me to start Delight. Well, it's interesting that this project uh, partly grew out of a class project at Stanford, too, so uh, talk a little bit about that, how that happened, and how you got the yeah. venture capital financing as well. I mean, it's really, DFJ. yeah, it was really exciting to me when I was getting ready to end um, I stint with Peace Corps and I was really excited about social enterprise and what was happening and I decided to look into MBA programs uh, and Stanford was on the one hand already an emerging school in the social enterprise space but then they were offering this collaboration with the new design school and they had a class called Entrepreneurial Design for Extreme Affordability. Okay. Which is just what I wanted to do uh, and within that they spent half the class sort of teaching design principles and human-centered design and then half the class had a, you had an actual client and real customers and we're trying to do something and, and the team that eventually became Delight wanted to look at energy and we wanted to look at lighting and we were doing yeah. that in Myanmar yeah. and Cambodia okay. and we had the rough prototypes for, for this right. project and that yeah. that went through the class and then we were really excited yeah. working nights and weekends the next year and uh, you got the prize from DFJ right? Yeah so eventually we started going and, and applying to business school plan competitions and, and okay. DFJ essentially has a big one called the DFJ Venture Challenge. Yep. And they pit uh, all the different winners of the individual school competitions against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we you were very, that. very fortunate to get that. First okay. place is a quarter million dollars, winner takes all. Okay. And that was sort of the impetus to turn down our other offers and okay. go for it. And you've since raised uh, another round of financing from social entrepreneur, social investors, as well as venture capitalists, traditional. So now, right? yeah, we have a... We have some great investors, DFJ, Garage Technology Ventures, Nexus India Capital, mm -hmm. uh, on the slightly more commercial side, and then on the on the social, more social side, social venture, we have Acumen Fund and Great Matters Capital. Okay. Um, so a really good set of investors. Okay. And then even, we have one uh, great corporate partner, Mahindra Mahindra, which is a large Indian multinational company. Okay, good. Uh, where's the impact you think that your company will have? Uh, I'm hoping that we're gonna reach 100 million people. Uh, over you know the next decade uh, and we're going to be able to not only bring light to them but we're rapidly looking at what how do we improve the quality of life of our customers so that uh, access to energy and electricity is not the barrier to their improving their quality of life whether that means education or healthcare or communication or other facilities so we're already very much looking at uh, what role light plays and what role mobile phones and charging mobile phones plays in their lives and from there we'll move on to other other things. How many people in the world are without who are off the grid? Uh, right now it's estimated that 1.6 billion people, about one in three people in the world, or one in four people in the world don't have access to any electricity. Uh, and I would estimate another almost a billion probably have very, very intermittent access to electricity. So what do you think the potential revenues of this company are? Oh, I mean, I'd like to grow, you know, I'd like to grow a billion dollar company. You would? Of course. And uh, would you like to take it public, or what's your dream? Uh, I think it would be pretty amazing to take a social enterprise public. I think it would signal to the markets in the world that this can be done and that this is a uh, really serious business. Uh, you know, but there are other options out there, and we'll explore them. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you very much.